conclusion, let me repeat. Although I realize this may cost me my position with the network, I am still 100% behind everybody's hour. The show I created. Sincerely yours. Mr. Brown, I may be talking out of turn, but how can the New York office hold you responsible just because one show hasn't done too well? Because I stuck my neck out. Everybody's hour was my brainchild, Pat. In spite of their opinion, I guaranteed the network the show would be a success. I was sure it'd be a big hit. I can't understand how everybody's hour could miss. It was designed to appeal to everyone in the family. It had comedy, it had drama, music, puppets, a panel of guest experts. It even had a scene from an Italian movie. It had everything but the kitchen sink. That was our sponsor, Keller's Kitchen Sinks. Hi, Pat. Here are the tickets Mr. Brown ordered for this week's show. Thank you, Mr. Say, Pat, there's a rumor going around the water cooler that Mr. Brown is in trouble over the low rating as show god. It isn't a rumor, it's a fact. Oh, I feel sorry for Mr. Brown. He's afraid he's going to lose his job. Mm. Did you hear what the rating was? Minus three. The lowest rating since the crystal set. Yeah. Gee, there's a million people to every point. Minus three, that means that we owe the ratings three million people. Oh, please, Mickey, I feel bad enough without you going into the gory details. Tell me, Pat, how is Mr. Brown taking all this? Pretty low. He's ready to toss in the towel. Yeah. This is his farewell letter to the New York office. This here? Yeah. Pretty gruesome. Can you read shorthand? No, but anybody can tell that there's tragedy written all over that. I'll take his tickets in personally to him. Maybe I can cheer him up. Oh, Mickey, I don't think you'd better. Now, wait just a minute, Pat. I'll get him out of his trouble somehow. No, Mickey. Well, Mr. Brown, I, I, I brought in the tickets for your show here. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Mulligan. We've had our differences, you and I. And I must confess, I've often anticipated our parting. But I never thought I'd be the one to go. Go? What, what, what do you mean, sir? They're thinking of canceling my show, Everybody's Hour. Well, look, Mr. Brown, you can't give up that easily. You, you told me yourself that it was the audience that decided whether a show was a hit or a failure. And I'll bet when, when the people find out that Everybody's Hour has been canceled out, they'll... They'll write in and, and protest. Uh, fan mail. If I'm replaced, I'll put in a good word for you with my successor. Well, I certainly appreciate that, Mr. Brown, but if your show was to get enough fan mail, why, why you wouldn't have to be replaced, sir. I believe in myself. That's what counts the most. But I think that fan mail is the answer, sir. Uh, fan mail. Well, I guess I'd better get home and break the news to Alice. Wait a minute. What's the matter, Mr. Brown? Not now, Mulligan, not now. Pat, come in here quick and bring your book. Well, well, Mr. Brown. Mulligan, I've just had a brainstorm. I'll show the New York office I'm not licked yet. Uh. I'll take my case to the people. <laughs> fan mail, that's the answer. Yes, sir. <laughs> fan mail, I believe that's, that's the answer. It's a wonderful idea, isn't it? I don't know how it happened. I was thinking about something else and suddenly it just popped into my head. Popped into your head, huh? Fan mail. I see. Yes, Pat, take a memo. To the producer of Everybody's Hour. Leave 30 seconds open at closing of show for fan mail appeal. Ask the viewers to write in giving their opinion of the show. Regards. <laughs> Isn't a wonderful idea, fan mail, Pat? Huh? Now, all we have to do is wait for the verdict of the jury. I know they'll justify my verdict. Oh, I know they will too, sir. <laughs> it just popped into my head. <laughs> Mail came in, huh, Pat? Uh-huh. A lot of people write in praising the show. See for yourself. Five letters here? Maybe there's one stuck to the side. Save yeah. yourself the time. There are only five. Mr. Mulligan, Mrs. Mulligan, Mickey Mulligan, Freddie Devlin, and yours truly, Pat Hardy. Five letters. Well, at least it's a trend. 
Maybe the millions of people who saw the show were going to write in but just didn't bother to do it, that's all. All I can say is Mr. Brown sure is in plenty of hot water. I don't know how to break the news to him. I only hope more letters arrive by tomorrow. Well, at least we can count on five more. That is if I can think of anything else to say. I don't want Mr. Brown to see this empty box. Will you hide it in the stock room? Yeah, sure, Pat. We'll do it. Come on, Fred. Well... Oh, uh, oh, Mr. Brown, the pan mail's arrived. That's right, yes, sir. Let's see it. Oh, there's too many of them, Mr. Brown. Too take, take you all day to look at them all. We, we thought you'd be too busy to read them today, sir. Too busy? My job depends on it. Let's take a look at it. Oh, why don't you, if I might suggest, uh, read them on Sunday? No, no. I'll take a look at them right now. I want to see what cities they're coming from. Oh, this is the Los Angeles bunch right That's here. That's right. Do you mind if well, I see them? Uh, well, you see, the out-of-town mail, uh, it doesn't come in until tomorrow, Mr. Brown. You're like, well, here's just uh, here four or five letters oh, right there. You can good see response. Them. Self, uh, everybody. What they have oh, wait, excuse me, Mr. Brown. May I see them just for a minute? Mr. Brown, <laughs> we, we think ourselves that the show is just going to be great. So, like it's 11 o'clock, Mr. Brown. You don't want to be late uh, for your appointment at the sales department. Yeah, I'd better get right over there. Here you are. Uh, how many letters do you think are in there? Oh, five. Five. Five hundred. Five hundred. Five hundred letters, huh? Yes, sir. That ought to make the New York office sit up and take notice. <laughs> Bring that mail into my office first thing in the morning. I want to read every bit of it. Yes, sir. We'll, we'll get it right into you, sir. Yes, sir. Am I glad you thought of that appointment he had, Pat? I thought of it. I made it up. I had to think of some way to get your heads out of the noose. And you put our heads right back in the noose again. Where are we going to get 500 letters from to look at? And by tomorrow morning yet? Well, I haven't got time for any details, but I'd appreciate it if you'd both be at my house tonight and bring a dozen fountain pens. <laughs> Sincerely yours, Marvin Eglin. What's the matter? You got it? Oh. Oh, wait a minute now. Let me get mine out first. Here, I'll help you. Easy. Easy. That's right. Steady enough. E oh, you're, you're really stuck here. Oh, there we go. Oh. Boy, I got writer's cramp so bad I can't even put the pen down. Yeah. It's too bad Pat wouldn't come. We certainly could have used her. How many letters does this make we've written? Oh, about 436. Four. We're almost home. Four th Shh, don't talk so loud. We'll wake up my mom and pop. Yeah. Enjoyed your show, enjoyed your show, enjoyed your show. You used that in letter 327. You're in a rut. I know, all right, so I gotta... Wait a minute. Uh-oh. It's I got it now. Oh, wait I, I've got... Wait wait easy with me now, Steady. please, because... The... Steady. Let me, let me just Look, get this one out. To me. Huh? Relax the arm. Ow. Oh, it's just... cramping good now. Well, relax, relax the whole arm. Relax. You got okay. it relaxed? Right. It's relaxed, Relaxed. Right? Steady. Right. Oh, what? What's the matter with you, Blair? Oh, sorry, Nick. Oh. Look, we're tired, Nick. I'm tired. You're tired. I can't think of any more names. I'm going to go home and go to bed. No, wait just a minute. You forgot one thing. What's that? We got to seal up all these envelopes. <laughs> uh... You know, Mick, if a guy could invent a flavor for these, he'd make a million dollars. You're still riding. Yeah, maybe. What's the matter with you? I'm in real trouble. What? My tongue went dry. Me too. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah, well, look, before you go get a drink, just remember one thing. What? We still got to stick on the stamps. <laughs> look at that mail, Pat. Just look at it. There's the voice of the jury. Yes, sir, Mr. Brown, there are 500 of them there, just like you said. 500 letters, Mr. Brown, all praising the show. There's only one thing I can tell you about this handwriting here. It looks like it was written by a five-year-old. <laughs> Not necessarily, Mr. Brown. Uh, maybe the writer had writer's cramp. Oh, Mr. Brown, take a look at this one. I don't see anything so special about this letter, except the stamps have been put on with adhesive tape strips. <laughs> Why would anyone do a thing like that? Gentlemen, I want you to stick around here a couple of these letters. Yes, sir. Dear International Broadcasting Company, you are my favorite broadcasting company. I think you're just peachy. I also think your show, Everybody's Hour, is real nervous. I hope it stays on the air forever with your wonderful broadcasting company, Sincerely, Harriet Hotchkiss. P.S. Would you please send me an autographed picture of your wonderful broadcasting company? Yeah, that sure is an exciting letter, yeah. Mr. Brown. How about that letter, Mr. Brown? <laughs> well, it takes all kinds. Gentlemen, 
I want you to remember one thing in case you ever reach the top in the business world. It's the Harriet Hotchkisses who decide whether a show is a success or a failure. Yes, sir, Mr. Brown, we'll remember that. Well, it's the yes, sir. Harriet Hotchkisses. Yes, sir, Mr. Brown. <laughs> now that I've got the ammunition, I can hardly wait to show these to the sponsor when he shows up today. <laughs> this is the voice of the people. There's the voice of the people. Don't you agree, Mr. Keller? Harriet Hotchkiss. She writes a very intelligent letter. You know, we depend on the Harriet Hotchkisses of this country to keep Keller's kitchen sinks in business. Would you like to read another letter, Mr. Keller? There are nearly 500 of them here. No, I've read five or six of them. They all seem to say about the same thing. There's uh, just one thing that bothers me. What's that, sir? Well, you made an appeal for fan mail on the show only two days ago. I've never heard of such a big response in so short a time. Yes, it is unusual. But that's what's so encouraging. You realize this is only the first batch of letters to come in. This second batch should be double this size. Well, I don't know. You'll have to admit, Brown, that this kind of response doesn't jibe with the show's low rating. Oh, I checked on that rating, sir. That minus three was a misprint. Our actual rating is plus eight. <laughs> well, there was a mistake on the rating. There might be a mistake on other things. There's always the possibility that this fan mail has been, uh, shall we say, created to make a favorable impression on me? Well, Mr. Keller, in that case, why don't you take a letter? Any letter. We'll contact the writer and you can meet him in person, question him, ask them anything you want. Very well. Oh, Mickey, why did you do it? You know very well why we did it, Pat. We didn't want Mr. Brown's head to roll off the guillotine. If Mr. Keller finds out those letters aren't on the up and up, Mr. Brown's head will roll anyway. Now, Pat, you... Yes, sir? Pat, would you please phone to Mr. Josh Ward at view site 06321. Josh Ward, view site 06321. Yes, sir. Ask him when it'll be convenient for him to come over and meet with Mr. Keller and me here in my office. Yes, sir. Pat, don't bother to call that number. It's the dog pound. The dog pound? Yeah, by 2 a.m. this morning, Freddie and I ran out of addresses. Josh Ward, he was letter number 365, Josh Ward, dog catcher. Oh, Mickey, what are we going to do? Mr. Brown and Mr. Keller are in there right now waiting to see Josh Ward. Hmm. Well, well, we're not going to disappoint him, Pat. You tell Mr. Brown that Mr. Ward is on his way over here right now. Mickey, no! Yes. <laughs> Wonderful lunch, Brown. A pleasure. Oh, Pat, did you get hold of Mr. Ward yet? Mr. Josh Ward is waiting in your office, sir. Ward's here? Of course he's here. Let's go talk to him, Mr. Keller. Oh, Mr. Brown. Not now, Pat. Please, Mr. Brown, I'd like to explain something. Later, Pat, later. <laughs> Mr. Josh Ward? Correct. I'm Edward Keller of Keller's Kitchen Sinks. I am happy to make your acquaintance. It's a pleasure. What's going on here? Uh, Mr. Smith, I believe. Brown's the name. Brown. I'd yes. like to speak to you outside. Uh, just a moment, please. <laughs> Mr. Brown, I was a little dubious about how authentic those fan letters were. But now that Mr. Ward has arrived on the scene, I want to apologize to you. I was only trying to help uh, Mr. Brown. <laughs> I'd still like to speak to you in private. <laughs> just a moment, please. I have some questions to ask Mr. Ward. For the good of the show and for Keller's kitchen sinks. Oh, uh, won't you have a seat? Uh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, now then, Mr. Ward. I... Uh, Mr. Ward. <laughs> Oh, I beg your pardon. I didn't know that you were talking to me. Uh, you see, I pronounce my name W-A-R-D. W-A-R-D. Ward. Ward. Yes, I am a diction teacher. Ward. 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 Uh, try, do you care to try, sir? Ward. Ward. Yes, that's fine. <laughs> yes. Uh, now then, Mr. Ward. Uh, Ward. Uh, Ward. Uh, Ward. That's right. Did you mean everything you wrote in this wonderful letter praising the Everybody's Hour television show? Which one? You mean you wrote more than one? Oh, well, I was so enthusiastic about the show, I could uh, hardly stop writing. <laughs> Did you hear that, Brown? Here is an absolutely unbiased, honest opinion. Opinion, opinion, that is another word we must watch. 
Open Yan, Yan. You see the opinion is in front and comes back to Yan. Open Yan, Open Front Yan, Pin Yan. That's right. Yeah. This is just isn't an ordinary comment. This is a teacher's opinion. Uh, opinion Yan, Pin Yan. That's right. <laughs> I want to know more about you, Mr. Ward. I don't feel as though I should talk too much about myself. Uh, for fear that I give you the wrong impression. Mr. Keller, please. I think we've detained Mr. Ward long enough. Come along with no, me, sir. please, Mr. Brown. What Mr. Ward says here now may well determine the future of everybody's hour. Uh, now tell me, Mr. Ward. Ward. Uh, Ward. Uh, Ward. Uh, Ward. Uh, what impressed you most about everybody's hour? Well, I liked the entire show, particularly the commercials. You did? Yes, however, I do have a few criticisms. Yes, I, I would like to hear a little more diction. For instance, I would like you to call the show Keller's Kitchen Sink program. Keller's Kitchen Sink. Keller's Kitchen Sink. Keller's kitchen. 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 That's right. That's tricky. Yes. You're absolutely right. Mr. Brown, make a note of that. Oh, Mr. Ward. Uh, Ward. Uh, I wonder if you could see your way clear to stay a few more minutes till Mr. Connor gets here. Mr. Connor? Yes. You see, just before we went to lunch, I took the liberty of having your secretary call Francis Connor. His letter was just chuck full of constructive criticism. I think it would be advantageous to us to talk to both of these men at once. Mr. Ward. Did you by any chance write this letter too? No, Freddie wrote that. I mean, uh, that was written by uh, someone else. Mr. Keller, do we have to see Mr. Connor? Yes. And I'm surprised he isn't here by now. He only lives a couple of miles away. Oh, you say that Mr. Connor is coming to the office? Yes. Oh, well then I think that I should leave and come back as Mr. Connor. I mean, before I should come back after Mr. Connor has been here. Yes, Pat? There's a Mr. Connor to see you. Send him in. Wait a minute, how can that be? I haven't left yet. <laughs> Hiya, fellas. Mr. Connor? That's right, Mac. Francis X. Connor, ex-light heavyweight champion of the island. <laughs> Mr. Connor? This is Mr. Brown? How are you, Charlie? How are you? And Mr. Ward? Yes. I'm Mr. Ward, the addiction teacher. Oh, addiction teacher. Well, how about that? I'm an ex-prize fighter myself, but you'd never know it to look at me, right? That's because I quit in a nick of time. I didn't want to spoil my looks. And I'm Mr. Keller, head of Keller's Kitchen Sinks. Keller's Kitchen Sinks, how about that? I got one in every room. Even got one in my dressing room. On the island. Did you hear that, Brown? A Keller's Kitchen Sink in every room. And one on the island. <laughs> Well, it's, it's too bad that you have to be going, Mr. Connor. <laughs> oh, uh, just a minute, Mac. I ain't told the gentleman what I think of his show yet. I have a good idea. Let's all have lunch sometime next month. Oh, we can't leave now. Miss Hotchkiss hasn't arrived yet. Hotchkiss? Hotchkiss? Hotchkiss. Yes. I had your secretary called Harriet Hotchkiss. Uh, the woman's angle, you know. That must be her now. Come in, Miss Hotchkiss. Mr. Keller. Yes? I thought you'd like to know Miss Hotchkiss can't make it. Oh, well, that's too bad. I did so want to get the woman's angle. Yes, that is too bad. <laughs> no, that won't work. Let's face it, there's no way out. How do I get into jams like this? Pardon me, can I get a word in here, pal? Worrying isn't going to help. Let me give you something pleasant to think about. What's the problem, son? Oh, there's, there's no problem, Pop. Sorry, I just thought I'd ask. I wonder if they're still taking applications in the Foreign Legion. Foreign Legion? Sounds like woman trouble. Or better yet, I'll go to Arabia and drill for oil wells. Oil wells? It sounds like money trouble. <laughs> All right. I could get on a tramp steamer and go to Barneo. Now you got me. I can't think of any trouble that sounds like. But if there's anything you want to talk about, Michael, I'm a good listener. Mm, Pop, I got myself into some trouble that, that nobody can help me out of. Well, I don't want to butt in. You're over 21 and you can take care of yourself. You know, my father said something interesting once. He said, a man's a father till his son's 21. 
And after that, he's either a pal or a stranger. Oh, Pop. You're never going to be a stranger to me. It's just that I... I got myself into a jam and... Well, nobody can get me out of it. Really? Would you believe it? I've been in a lot of jams myself. And the funny thing, I, I always get out of them the same way. Well, how? By taking the simplest and hardest way out. By telling the truth. The truth? Oh, that's, that's easy for you to say, Pop, but you don't know what the truth means in this particular incident. I, I, she, Freddie and me, we tried to help Mr. Brown out and write a lot of letters to help his show. And we signed fictitious names, and then we had to masquerade as somebody we weren't, and we... The truth. <laughs> of course, it's so simple. I'll tell him the truth. <laughs> Mr. Keller, sir? Ah, Mr. Ward. Uh, I was just thinking about you. Well, I'm glad you're here, Mr. Keller. I came in to tell you the truth. Just look at this box of fan mail, Ward. There are over a thousand letters here. A thousand letters? That's impossible. Freddie and I only wrote 500, 432 to be exact, Mr. Keller. And they all praise I... Keller's Kitchen Saints. I mean, Keller's Kitchen Saints. Oh, uh, at your suggestion, I sent a teletype to Chicago that the announcer pronounced it that way from now on. That's another thing. You see, I'm not really a diction teacher. In fact, I haven't got very good diction myself. And my name isn't Ward, sir. Oh, I understand. You're afraid we'll be pestering you for the rest of no, your sir. life for endorsements and sales no, angles. Sir. No, sir, that's not it at all. You see, Mr. Keller, my name is really Mickey Mulligan. And I can show you right here in my wallet that... I, that Oh, gosh, I must have left it at home. Oh, the absent-minded professor, eh? <laughs> You're all right, Ward. I, I'm telling oh, the truth, uh, sir. Ward, I want you to meet someone. But, uh, but, sir. Oh, uh, would you come in, please? <laughs> do you know who this is, Ward? May I present Harriet Hotchkiss? How do you do? Now, Harriet Hotchkiss? But that's impossible. You can't be Harriet Hotchkiss. I'm Harriet Hotchkiss. You are? <laughs> You're just a figment of my imagination. I am? Well, I... I <laughs> Would you like to see my driver's license? Harriet Hotchkiss expires 1958. I don't understand this at all. I'm sorry, oh, ma'am. man. You are the most. Believe me, this is the truth, Mr. Keller. My name is really Mickey Mulligan. I only did all of this because I thought it would help Mr. Brown keep his job. It's the absolute... Well, Mr. Ward, good morning. Mr. You're Brown. looking mighty chipper. I'm glad you're here. It's all right. You can tell them the truth. I'm ready to take the consequences, sir. Uh, Mr. Ward, you're plugging another show. Well, Mr. Brown, it's me, Mickey Mulligan. Can you sign all of my checks? I, Freddie, Freddie, am I glad you're here? Tell everybody who I am, would you? Oh, please? good morning, Mr. Ward. <laughs> it's me, Mickey Mulligan. Please, Mr. Ward, sir. I'm on duty. <laughs> oh, Mr. Ward. Oh, Pat, you're my last chance. Will you tell everybody here who I am? <laughs> all right, Mulligan. I'd like to go on with this little game for the rest of my life. But I haven't got the heart. You can be Mulligan again. Thank you very much, Mr. Brown. And Mickey. Yes, sir. I must confess, Mr. Brown told me the truth about you and Devlin this morning. Oh, that, that's wonderful, Mr. Brown. I admit it was a foolish thing you and Devlin did, but it shows your loyalty to the network and to your boss, and that adds up to something in my book. And for your information, all that fan mail is legitimate. It came in this morning, and it's very complimentary. And that's why I'm renewing the show for another season. Congratulations, Mr. Brown. Thank you. Well, now that everything is settled, there's just one thing that's bothering me, Mr. Keller. What's that, Mickey? I'm sorry, but it's... It's you, Miss Hotchkiss. Me? Oh, well, don't you remember, Mick? We took the name Harriet Hotchkiss out of the telephone book. It just so happened that the real Harriet Hotchkiss wrote in. I feel like I've just been pardoned. Well, now that I'm back on the payroll again, I, I'd better get back to work. Oh, just a minute, gentlemen. In order to show my appreciation for all the things that you tried to do, I'm going to give you a special assignment with the show. A special assignment? Special assignment. No matter what you give us, Mr. Brown, we can lick it. <laughs> Back in just a moment.
Hi, friends. That was a good word from the folks who will be bringing you our next show. Be with us then, won't you? Incidentally, I hope I have all of these letters sealed by that time. I'm not wearing out my tongue anymore. I've got a new assistant. Here. <laughs> good night, friends. <laughs>